Welcome back to What Would You Ask podcast. My next guest, I've been looking forward to this uh, interview for a while, right? It's uh, one of the most polarizing people to ever walk into the tank. Some people consider him the sixth, sixth shark. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I thought he was pretty impressive myself, right? Walks in there with a product called Tech, right? Technology enabled clothing. It's like what, all this stuff on the counter is in my jacket, right? It's like, no, but it's, let's see it, prove it. And then there it is, right? Good stuff. And then, you know, we got to the back and forth with the sharks and you, it's all of a sudden, wait a minute. He's pretty knowledgeable too. He knows business. He knows his product. He knows margins. He knows value, valuation. He knows his lifetime value, Kevin. He's good to go. He's going toe to toe. So a lot to talk about. I'm really excited uh, about having the inventor of uh, tech, uh, technology enabled clothing, apparel with the pockets, you know, with this with gadgets and put all your stuff in and safely carry them and uh, protect them. You don't have to worry about that. Then you got Scotty vest. Didn't really get into that. And we'll talk about to Scott about this because you know, you got to, they had to have their taste. If you mentioned it, right. They got to get a little piece of that back in those days. This is, we're talking about episode season three, episode seven. So it was back in the day when that was still around. Um, he was, yeah. Season, season three, episode seven. I got that correct. Uh, Scott Jordan, welcome to What Would You Ask podcast. Glad you're here. Thanks so much, Nick. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it. So let's jump right in. Um, you obviously were impressive. The product was impressive. Your demonstration, I mean, it seemed like, and I've read a lot about the preparation. I love the time you're like, if I did it again, I wouldn't spend one tenth the time that I did preparing. But man, you were, it was really um, riveting. I mean, I, everybody was watching it. I know I was watching it with family members. It was really cool. And uh, it was impressive. And then we started discussing the business. And it seemed to me, and, and I really want to take it from here and we can go on about uh, what happened in the tank, but there was really two central issues. And one of those was the patent, right? Mark has his whole thing about patent trolls. And we all know what you know that is. It's filing, uh, I don't know, frivolous law, uh, patent infringement lawsuits and all of that stuff. You know, if, it, if it's a... It's a true patent, you know, I would argue, uh, and I think Mark's a sharp guy and, and I, I like him, but I think he might've been off base on this one. Um, because if you have a patent, that's what it's there for, right? So and a what? business behind the patent as well. That, that's the difference. I mean, you, you can have a true patent. Yeah. You know, a patent trolls have true patents, you know, but they're trolling because they don't have a business and all, their, their business is, is, is just making money solely off of, you know, um, other people. And, and, and in my case, you know, there was a patent and a business behind the patent, namely Scotty. That's and right. therein lies, therein lies the rub. I mean, you know, it, for you've done your research, so you understand the difference between Scotty vest and technology enabled clothing. And most people who watch the show have no idea. So were you, let's, let's start on the first issue that I think was, then you're touching on it now, Scott, is, you know, Mark really jumped on the soapbox on this. Was that, first of all, was it surprising uh, to you that that's where he went with this? He's a technology guy. Um, tell us about what, what that felt like in the tank. I do want to mention one other thing. There's only two people that have, I've done 64, Brody, what is it, 64, 65? 65 interviews. There's only two people that come up that I want to see the whole unedited version. Scott is definitely one of them. And then Copa Divina, um, Copa Divino, I forgot what his name, John Martin or something like that. I just want to see the whole thing. Just give it, give me the two hours, whatever it was. I want to see every bit of it, every audio video. Uh, Cause you know, there's something lost in the edit, right? You got to know that. But anyway, I want to go back to this. I apologize. We're going on a tangent here. <laughs> the, the Mark Cuban thing, he went right off, right on the soapbox. Tell us about how that was, how it felt uh, when that's live happening. Um. You know, I, I guess I should have done my research a little better to realize that he had very specific views on patents, you know, and I, I did not expect um, him to come at me so hard, so quickly and so hard. Um, you know, you know, he basically said I was full of, you know, I don't know how, how yeah. friendly this is, but full of it. And I, you know, and I, when someone says that to me, and whether it be on television or otherwise, I'm going to stand up for what I believe in, and and I I, I did so. I I told him when he said he was out. I said you were out the moment you sat down. I I don't think anyone has spoken to Mark Cuban ever 
the way I spoke to him. I spoke to him like an equal because, you know, one day he was me, you know, before he got lucky with his, you know, I forgot what it was, uh, how he get, he made his first billion. Um, he got lucky. That's streaming you know, video, I, wasn't it? Yeah, it was streaming video. I forgot what the name of the company was. So, you know, I, I, I don't think I got lucky. I, I, I've had to work hard and I continue to work hard. But, you know, I think it's really important to, to set it up is that when I went on and I applied, I applied for the company Scotty Vest, which you can see yep. behind me. It's my retail company. And I was super excited. I rehearsed. I went through all the, the, uh, all the uh, you know, back and forth interviews. And it wasn't until I got the contract that I realized deep on page 42 in fine print that I realized that by merely appearing on the show, whether a deal was done or not, you had to give the producers 5% of your company. And it was only at that point where I'm like, oh my God, I've prepared all this time. You know, I'm not giving them 5% of a, a company at that point was doing $10 million a year. That's, you know, for them to make a fool of me, they wanted to out of the edit, you know, um, I've got to pivot. So I, I, I could have said, no, screw it. But you get so invested in the application process that you've already started seeing yourself on TV and counting the sales and everything else that you find a way. And in my case, you know, I had a subsidiary company called Technology Enabled Clothing that I controlled all the revenues for. And I didn't mind giving 5% of that company away. But the, the producers made it very clear and made me sign a side letter that if I merely uttered the word Scotty Vest, even in response to a, an offer for Scotty Vest. If I just said, oh, my company Scotty Vest, you know, that unto itself would have cost me 5%, even if they never aired the episode at all. So just imagine, you know, the amount of pressure that you're under that you can't name the name of the company that you're talking about, it, you know, for an hour and a half, merely doing so would have cost you $2 million or whatever. Yeah. It was it was extreme pressure. So most people who watch the show have no idea that that background was going on. And it was, it was, it was, it was hard. <laughs> it know? was the second of the two central issues that I think was, and I didn't know that background either until I started digging in for this interview. Um, but the interesting thing, piece was the sharks thinking about the greed because you weren't offering the whole thing, but you just described uh, eloquently why that doesn't make sense. Right. So I didn't, I mean, it's that they don't even know the background either. Uh, and their complaint was, well, I want a piece of the $10 million retail business. Right. I mean, that was their part of their, and I don't blame them. Yeah. I, you of know, I, you know, I, that, that's a natural statement. I, you know, I don't know if they were baiting me, if they knew I couldn't, if they knew why. I, I sense that they didn't. They, you know, they, they just, you were trying to make good TV. It's a TV show. Let's remember that. I mean, it's yeah. not a business entrepreneur. It's, a, it, it's entertainment. And yeah. uh, that's, that's what it is. Craig from Oak, uh, Oak Brook, Illinois wants to know, was there a strategy for navigating through the shark tank? Was your, what was your strategy for navigating through the shark tank? Yeah, oh, I, I had a, a, an absolute strategy. I, I had it very planned out. I, I wanted to do, a, I, I had a checklist of things I wanted to do and say. And, and, I, and one of those was taking everything out of my vest to, to show just how much stuff that, that there really was. And I got a chance to do that because believe it or not, all that stuff, laptops, everything were, were, was in my, in my vest as I presented. Unfortunately, they cut that. If they had not cut that, you know, people would have recognized that what I was showing and doing was really cool. And, and, and I, you know, I wanted to make sure that I, I allowed them to try it on. Uh, as well, so they could appreciate, you know, wow, you know, this really does balance the weight, and you know, you know, and my strategy was not to to screw up my intro, my, you know, the 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 two minute commercial that you get to tee up your business, and and I was really nervous that I would screw that up, and I was concerned that if I did, would they show me screwing up? Here's here's the fact, whether they tell you this or not, you can screw it up. They're going to let you play it again. If you think that they've gone through eight seasons or whatever, 10 seasons now of no entrepreneur screwing it up, they let you fix it. You know, I, I didn't. Um, there were some technology things, but my strategy was get out of there at the moment that I knew I didn't have a deal and I did the four things on my checklist. And, and because the longer you stay in that room, the more you give them to edit, making you look like an idiot. Yeah. 
So I was trying to edit myself. I was producing the show in my head at the point where I pointed at them and said, you're out, you're out, I'm out of here. They would have, they would have continued negotiating, but I knew the longer you stay in there, there's more that they can use to make you look stupid and make them look important and, and to get out. So I wanted to be likable as well. I don't know if I achieved that because, you know, based upon the feedback that I got, you know, I'm the only one who, you know, sort of ruffled their feathers and people don't like, you know, you're rough. 50% of the people, the feedback we got love me, 50% hated me, which is, you know, polarizing. Perfect. Yeah, I think, I think the um, feedback, we send out all of the guests as they sign on to do this and we got the same thing. We got people it's like, that's awesome. He's the guy I wanted to see. And we got people, the same people that say they want to see you and hear what you have to say to defend yourself because you were dis to your point, you just mentioned Scott, um, when you said you're out, you're out that, that some people that was disrespectful. Others were like high five. And I can't believe anybody said that to Kevin. Right. So, so you got both of those, those folks. Um, you did have that, you know, when that happened, um, I don't know who I was watching it with. It might've been Brody, if we were watching together, he said, when you did that, he, um, my partner over here said he had an exit strategy. He knew he was doing that when he came in. Like you, oh, like yeah, you I, knew, I knew the moment I was going to get a deal, I was going to be right. memorable. Yeah. I, I was not going to be the guy who got rejected. So, so I wanted to tell them they were out before they told me whatever it is they were going to tell me. That was planned. I mean, I, you know, the night before I said, wouldn't it be cool if I could, you know, tell them they're out. And <laughs> I had no desire to do that. I did go in looking for a deal. I was not there just for publicity. Yeah, um, we read, read some of that, but I don't, from the stuff we've read and the people we've got feedback from, it didn't, I think everybody thought you were bringing in a real product with a full intention of getting a deal. And when Mark jumped ugly with you and then we got into the whole greed of the retail piece and all that, it kind of moved away from, you know, what the, the tech stuff. And I know we couldn't talk about Scotty Vest at the time, but that seemed to me the case. Let me go to Melissa's question from Glastonbury, Connecticut. She wanted to know specifically, she says, Scott, did you have a specific shark in mind to secure a deal? I wanted Mark Cuban. That's the ir irony of it all. And he was the first one out. I, of course, everyone wants Mark Cuban. I mean, you know, yeah. You know, yeah. So let's talk about post a little oh, bit. Oh, and I also wanted Damon because of his experience in the apparel industry. Oh, there you go. That's a good, yeah, you know. that's definitely a good match. Um, let me ask another question. Rob from Walnut Creek, California wants to know, were there any weak areas of your business that you thought would be concerning when you got to the Q&A with the Sharks? Yeah. I mean, what Mark said, what, a, a wire to a hole? That's a patent? Mm. It's, it's crazy to think that. But, you know, it, it is a patent. I mean, you know, the things that are patents, Velcro is a patent. Right. You know, uh, you know t t two, two different types of fabric that stick together. Uh, Levi's, you know, was founded on, on a rivet. The a rivet, rivet yeah. was a patent. I mean, yep. you know, rivets were around well before, you know, but someone said, let's attach them to, to jeans. And then, then that's a patent. So it's not up to Mark Cuban to decide the value of a patent, but, but trying to make people understand, you know, you know, the importance of patents and, and you know, how they apply. Yeah. One other thing that was really interesting when you went to make your phone call with Waz when you came back in, that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen on Shark Tank in my life. When, and I'm just paraphrasing what you did, and maybe you could correct me, but you pointed to Mark and you said, uh, Waz says hello, and then you, you looked at Kevin and you kind of went, uh, he doesn't know who you are. That was just the funniest thing <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. I Kevin's, made that up, by the way. That I know, but Kevin's face smiling uh, and then went to from like smiling to the stoic, like, what? <laughs> it was just, it was like priceless. And I, I mean, I, if I, I'm I was Kevin, they were gonna, I, I, I thought they were going to edit that out because it made their sharks not look so lovable. But. I think if, if I'm Kevin, I'm thinking, man, that's a great, what a, that's a great line by you. You got to give you props for that. I mean, I, I mean, get off your pedestal a little bit for that. That's pretty cool. Um, Waz, the decision of having the phone call to Waz is, I mean, they're talking about a guy that's a, you know, icon. Is that, I, is that What's the purpose of that? You could have had anybody. TV, just yeah, make okay, TV. Okay. Yeah. And to let him, let them know he was on my board. Right. I mean, I, you know, I, I was producing a TV show. I, you know, I was looking for an investment, producing and editing 
you know, a TV show all at the same time. So yeah, that was, I, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get him. I was, you know, we had scheduled it out and he's like, well, I'm busy. You know, if I'm available, I'll take your call. So I'm walking back and they're trying to get him on the line. And it was going to be pretty embarrassing if I came back and like, uh, <laughs> You know, I couldn't get Waz on the line. So um. that's true. That's true. Um, before we got get to the the post tank, I, I want to um, touch on with you a couple of comments that you made uh, regarding uh, this exchange you had with with Mark. I guess this was post tank anyway. It was a kind of a yeah. war, um, and it started with, I guess, just the whole thing around the patents and you're you're quote was the whole exchange was disingenuous the first thing they asked any and ask excuse me any entrepreneur yeah. is do you have a patent and the fact that mark took it upon himself to encourage patent infringement after the show was wrong talk about that a little bit it was horrible i mean it was devastating i i mean i we i thought about suing him to be honest with you for tortious interference with contract i mean we're, after the show aired um you know, um, Mark got into a Twitter battle with me directly and he egged me on and um, again saying how ridiculous it, that it was that it was a patent. And he went to another company that knocked off my patent and, and, and lost in court, you know, on the basis, along with a, a number of other you know, uh, people that had uh, licensed my patent based upon the strength of it. Um, and, and, and he, he offered to pay their legal expenses. And, and, and for a billionaire to turn to your, your, your competitor, I mean, that's, that's no longer fun and games. I, mean, I don't think that when people sign on to be a, a contestant on, on Shark Tank, they realize that you know, that's, that's something that can happen. You know, um, and this was a pissant competitor you know, at, that, that knocked off my, my product. And all of a sudden, he's got, a, he's got more of a windfall for not even appearing on the show because Mark's millions of followers now are exposed to his brand. And it was horrible. It, it, it was really, de it was devastating. I had not anticipated that. I later met Mark, by the way, and he pretended that he didn't remember me. Like, no. Tell, tell us about that. Where did you meet him and what was I, I met him at South by Southwest. I got a picture of me next to him. Um, and uh, you know, it, it, at a private party, you know, he's a really tall dude. He's intimidating. Um, and, and you know, I spoke to him for a while. I didn't know what to say. It was, it was, you know, he's like, I don't remember you. I'm like, you know, how many entrepreneurs come? I'm like, you, you got in a Twitter war with me <laughs> through a friend. I sent you product, you know, that potentially could have been used for the Mavericks. You know, you remember me. Don't pretend. All I remember, it's really awkward. He had shit on his teeth, and 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 I was like, I'm staring at him. I'm like, do I say you got some stuff on your teeth or not? You know, and, and, and I said, Mark, you know, just by the way, you, you got a little something there, you know, I, that's just who I am. If you got stuff on your teeth and it's obvious, I would appreciate it if you tell me. I didn't do it around a group of people. I didn't try to make him into a fool. He's like, whatever. And he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even take it off. <laughs> and he went in the bathroom later and took it off. But oh, it was fine. He's fine. I, again, I, you know, I, I understand when you look at things out of context and you don't know why I pitched that business versus the larger business. And, you know, he was still, by the way, wrong. He's like, Oh, you know, later you're, you're going to be Bluetooth in your shoulders and then it's going to distribute. You know what you get every time you buy a new iPhone, you get a cord right. for the wire to attach to a battery, you know, and you get headphones. Every new iPhone still comes with headphones to my recollection. Yeah. You know, so the Bluetooth is not, it's my favorite way of listening to music, but you know, we're dealing with, 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 by the way, for uh, medical devices, for, you know, type one diabetes, they have medical pumps that are using our products, you know, for the, for the, for the patented technology to put their device in the pocket. Oh, that's a great idea. That's awesome. And that was always part of the, the larger plan. Oh, that's well. great. Yeah, I don't, you know, how many years ago was that? And Mark was saying, you know, wires are going to be gone and it's all Bluetooth. It's all wireless. It's all this. It was eight years ago. And here we, yeah, and here we are. I, my son just got his first phone. He's 12 years old and came with, like you just said, the plug in the wire and the battery and all that stuff. So let me ask you something else. Comment on this. You said that uh, I don't really watch the show anymore. Knowing what goes on behind the scenes has made me lose interest. You said I felt like I controlled the room, but the edit didn't show that. Um, tell me about that because we get a lot of questions, Scott, about 
the editing, right? And then some of the ones I mentioned, Copa Divina, I mentioned you, people really want to see it all. I mean, you know, we, some people you're like, all right, let's get to the next person on there, you know, or this is the time I get a sandwich. But there's others that you just, you're, you're sitting on the edge of your seat and, the, and your episode was certainly that. Tell us about what we missed in the edit. Um, well, you missed, uh, oh my God, I, I, it was about 55 minutes uh, uh, of taping. And again, it could have gone on longer if I hadn't walked out and left. Um, I was very tempted to put an iPhone and press record and, and, and have it um, have a recording for myself because I wanted to listen to it after it occurred. Um, your contract would, my contract wouldn't allow me to even have this interview, but I, you know, it clearly wouldn't allow that. There's an IP involved in that and, and whatnot. So a couple of things. Um, you know, I, t I told you the part of me taking the, the jacket off, I'm really disappointed that didn't get in there. But um, after it was all said and done and I said, you're out, you're out. And I was like, right, you know, what do I do? You know, do I walk out or, and I thought, you know, no, I'm going to shake hands and walk, you know, say, thank you. I went from left to right, Mark Cuban. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I shook his hand and I went to Damon John. Damon said, this is exactly why I don't want smarter people than me working for me. I'm like, what? That is the dumbest thing I ever heard anyone say, you know, cause he felt played. He really thought that I completely played them all and he was played and it was all a hoax and it really wasn't, but I was, I was performing for sure. And any entrepreneur steps up on that stage, first and foremost, you have to be performing every second. So don't, 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 don't forget that. So that struck me. And then I saw Barbara and then I, I Mr. Wonderful shook hands. I got to Kevin. And I, I, I shook, went to shake Kevin's hand. And now, keep in mind, I've just shook four people's hands. And they all were very polite and respectful. He turns to me, I'm not shaking your hand. You know, after what you did to us, I, you, know, you, you know, I have no respect for you. And, and I said, I, Is this Kevin I, or Robert? It was, oh, Robert, Robert, okay. Robert, Robert. Her, 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 the nice guy, yeah. supposedly the nice guy. And he says, I'm not going to shake your hand. I said, you I have been in business for 20 years and in life even longer, and no one has ever refused to shake my hand. And with that, I said, I'm out of here. And I turned around. And that, that's when I went by. And of course, they cut it to make it seem like, I, you know, I was the dick. He was the dick. Oh, I know? get it. And, and I wish that, and that, and at the very end, you know, when I went to talk to the shrink, everyone knows you, you talk to a shrink, and the, and, and the shrink says, first thing I want you to know, sits me down you know, it might not even air, you know, so don't worry about what you said. And I said, were you in there? Were you, were you watching what went on? She said, of course I was watching. I, you know, how could I sit here and consult you if I wasn't watching? I said, tell me the truth and off the record, what are the odds that's not going to air? <laughs> and she said, guaranteed that's going to air. <laughs> <laughs> that was riveting. <laughs> you know? uh, that, that's absolutely true too. Everybody knew that. I mean, I know they get it in all the entrepreneurs say every interaction with the producers, as you go through audition and all that, they always say, I'm not guaranteeing anything. It might not air. Even if you, you know, at the end of the, you walk out, they still say, great job. Hey, you did a great job. I'm not guaranteeing it'll air. That one you could pretty much put in the bank, right? It's just like, you know, it's just, that was a guarantee. Um, so uh, am I disheartened by it when I watch the show? You know, it's, you're no longer watching a real interaction. You're, 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 you know it's fake. It's good TV. Occasionally I'll, I'll, I'll watch it and I'll enjoy it. I think a lot of people don't know that if you ask for a million dollars, you cannot lower the amount you ask. You can right. change the equity. So I, it's kind of a price is right reverse yeah. rule going on. Yeah. So I don't think a lot of people recognize that. Talk to me about the... Um shark tank effect you had, you made another comment oh God, i just want to read to you you said um we did we did 10 times the number of sales when i appeared on the big idea with donnie deutsch um and it may have gone differently uh if it was edited differently that's a comment that you made i mean look i think donnie deutsch is great and and uh, i'm from the new york city metro area and have a lot of respect for him in advertising and marketing and all of that stuff but the donnie deutsch show blowing out the shark tank was very surprising to me well, especially, I think they had a, probably 100,000 viewers compared to 7 million or 6 yeah. million. Yeah. Um, well, there, there, 
the Friday night before, I, I bought $2 million of inventory. I mean, I, I got my lenders involved. I mean, I, you know, I, I was ready to blow out, you know, on projections. That was a baseline. We said, all right, we did really well with Donnie Deutsch. So they had a hundred thousand. Let's assume that the edit goes well. And, 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 and the Friday night airing before had more sales than the Friday night of the airing. Now there were a number of reasons for this. My web host, promised me we would not go down. We went down, number one. Number two, uh, I, we couldn't predict that, you know, it was hard to, kind of hard to find. You, you had to search technology-enabled clothing, you know, technology-enabled clothing.com. It would redirect to Scotty Best. And, you know, but most importantly, it wasn't about a product that people wanted. It was about a, 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 an adversarial lawyer standing up for his business. So it, it, it didn't help. And, and then, you know, post-show, occasionally people will see me and recognize me. Most people who do, they're really pretty impressed. And I'm like, that's sweet. But it, it, my wife hates it. I mean, she thought it was stupid. And, and, you know, if, you, if I had invested as much energy and time and anticipation in anything else, even if it was raising money, you know, it, it would have been a much higher level of guarantee of success than this. It is like playing the lottery. And, 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 and most people who play the lottery lose for a lifetime. So if your listeners are thinking that going on Shark Tank is a guaranteed success, even with a bad edit, it's not true. Now, I, do I regret it? No, it was an experience of a lifetime. You know, am I glad I did it? I, I, yes, but if, if, if it was purely a business decision, was this an effective use of my my time and money and headspace? No. Yeah. I, I love the fact you mentioned, I read this also, that if you had any advice to um, pr prospective entrepreneurs heading to the tank, you said, get in and get out, right? Don't give them, you mentioned earlier in the show here, that don't give them that editable material that they can bring back and, you know, take a face or like you said, you weren't walking out when that back and forth with Robert happened that you were still there, but they cut it to make it look like you pointed at him and walked out the door. It was just, it's a, it's a different thing. And you I read some of the contracts that say, you know, they can do anything they want with you. Anything. <laughs> I mean, they could put any expression with any say it doesn't, you know, it's, it, they have that right. So uh, I want to get to the, to the product itself, Scott, tell everybody what's up today. Has the apparel evolved? You talked about the diabetes. Uh, I think that's a great solution. I mean, I mean, that's perfect. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with Scotty Vest and tech. Um, well, a few things. Uh, tech, you know, uh, we've let kind of be dormant. I have not pursued a patenting strategy. Patent strategy. You can find tech tags on the clothes. It's a cool logo. You know, we have not pursued um, the, the, the tech angle at, at all. And we, we hadn't much previously. Um, again, it was a, a, an in incubation intended, you know, you know, to be used if need be. But Scotty Vest has done tremendously well over the years. I think, you know, it's 20 years. We were the first digitally native clothing brand, you know, founded on the internet, you know, well before any of these, you know, Johnny come lately apparel brands that have started on the internet. Um, uh, we have 80, 80 different products uh, wow. for men and women. You know, we're not just about best. Uh, we've changed our branding to focus not so much on the on the wiring, um, but on the pocketing system. If you think about any article of clothing you have and say, would I prefer more better pockets in this article of clothing if they didn't have to be obvious? The answer is unequivocally yes, every single time. So we've been focusing on what we like to say, it's not rocket science. It's pocket science, there you, go. you know, and it really is science and engineering. We we literally will design a pocket so things don't fall out, that it's you know that they, they don't print, that they're the right size, that when your phone vibrates, you can feel it, you know. Um, and 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 so we've been building our product line there exponentially, and looking at these other markets, whether it be the medical device market. Um, and uh, we're actually coming out with a full line of calling them pockets to go, little cases that you put in your pocket that, you know, uh, but it's, it's not a pocket bulk, if you will. We, so right. we're expanding in, in that front. Um, but, you know, candidly, you know, it's, it's, I don't know you heard there's a pandemic going on, mm -hmm. you know, and we sell travel clothing, something that people perceive as travel clothing. Yeah. So if you're, if you're sitting at home in your underwear talking on Zoom, you don't need 
a Scotty vest with lots of pockets. So our goal is to, to, to preserve, you know, build, rebuild the, you know, build the brand and the website, taking more pictures and, and, and hopefully, you know, there'll be a vaccine soon and, and people, when they start to travel again, they're going to think about Scotty Vest for their travel experiences. What I love, Scott, about your apparel is, and I've liked this this first time I've saw it, is how sleek and attractive it looks. Forget about all the gadgets and where they can go. Just looking at it, I'd buy it just for the look of the vest itself if it didn't have the pocket system. That's one. Two is, you mentioned earlier in the show too, about the balance of the stuff. There's a lot of times you'll see, I've seen people put a lot of gadgets in their vests and I mean, yeah, there you go. You're looking at it right now. Let's see how balanced that is. It's not tugging one way or the other because you have a phone or wow, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Didn't expect that actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you know, we designed it so the weight is balanced equally on your shoulders and it's yeah. engineered to, that way. This pocket here was the hardest pocket ever to design in my, yeah. in my base layer for your phone. So it doesn't rub against you uncomfortably, and, and there you go. There's a, there it is. The tech logo. The tech, yeah. You know, That's cool. Pockets here, pockets there. You, we start with the premise: the clothing has to be great looking. Yeah. And then and then we build in the functionality from there. Tell everybody where they can go to find this. Are we going to scottyvest.com or where should we head? Scottyvest.com, and you want to email me Scott at Scott Scott E Vest. That's S C O T T E V E S T dot com. Scott, thanks for the time today. I really appreciate it. I've been looking forward to talking to you. I was really impressed then, and I'm even more impressed now. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Nick. It was fun. We'll be back with more What Would You Ask podcast in a second. Stay with us.